Guys, it would not be a day with Cat Alvarado unless we checked out some dark related video. I don't know why you got on this train with me, but it's it just we're makes me happy. <laughs> and it's always the last video we shoot to do. We can go through some really uplifting stuff, but I'm always like, before she leaves this apartment, <laughs> want her to be in the darkest mood? I don't know what my problem is. That's our intro. That's Cat Alvarado. Hi. <laughs> See her on social media. What's up? I'm Greg Alba. Welcome to the Real Rejects. I'm gonna give a patron the date to someone at the end of this video. So tune in, find out if it's you who earned it. Oh, oh yeah, this video is called "Disturbing Movies You Won't Be Able to Sit Through." Oh my. There's bound to be a film out there that pushes one or two of you. I've seen that movie. Is the, the cannibal one? Push yep. Every single one. How is it? These movies it aren't just terrible. hard to watch. They it's aren't good just movie. edgy, and they don't just challenge the entire already demonetized, concept of good taste. They're deeply disturbing on almost every level. What the fuck? Director Eli Roth is no stranger to movies that are hard to sit through. I hate his 2006 most of his movies. Hostman proved that beyond a shadow of a doubt and turned his name into a synonym for over-the-top violence. With The Green Inferno, however, Roth pushes things further than ever before. And unless you're a seasoned gorehound, chances are you won't make it to the end. In the grand tradition of the video nasties of the 70s and 80s, Inferno tells the tale of a group of college-age activists who head to the Amazon to protest a logging operation. They find cannibals instead. We are all gonna escape tonight. All of us, I promise. Okay. Anti-environmentalist movie. <laughs> you can probably imagine the non-stop also stream racist. of gore and misery that follows. And if you can't last through the whole movie, well, that's kind of the point. In an interview with Rolling Stone, Roth said, If I've really done my job as a director, nobody can actually watch a movie. You don't want people walking out of a movie, you want them running out of the theatre screaming. When that happens, that's like a standing ovation for me. Uh, I don't think he understands Jesus horror. <laughs> that's in the not room, what happens. Effects and casting members of the Amazon's native population in key roles. That's led to some critics to accuse Inferno of cultural appropriation, but Roth doesn't seem to mind. He's insisted that the amateur actors were all paid fairly, and while they didn't have much experience in front of the camera, they, quote, got it right away and loved it. Yeah. Don't okay. confuse Martin's the 2008 French thriller with his 2015 <laughs> American remake. Both movies have roughly the same plot, but there's one big difference. The English language version is remarkably tame, despite its inherently unsettling subject matter. Ooh. That's by design. Writer Mark L. Smith told Creative Screenwriting, I'm not a lover of violence. I tried to stay away from all the violence and keep it off screen, which was kind of the polar opposite of the original. So if you've got a low tolerance for abuse and still want to watch something messed up for some reason, stick with that one. On the other hand, I feel like just if a you want to test your metal and diver the original with graphic depictions of brutal acts, Martyrs isn't for the faint of heart. When it screened at Cannes, audiences left the theatres in droves. They just couldn't handle it. From what the basic this? plot to the film's horrifying climax, it's easy to understand why. Sure, Martyrs is also a nuanced story about guilt and friendship, and Smith is right when he says that there's more to it than mere gore, but the gore is a big part of it. Like the New York Times wrote, this isn't blood. one for amateurs. You won't find everything that makes. Oh, I heard. Oh, I would never screen. watch this. I would never. I would never watch this movie. The movie is absolutely brutal. It's nope. bad enough that even never watch star, it. Monica Bellucci can't sit through it. But that's not the only reason over 250 people fled from the film's can premiere, with many fainting or seeking medical treatment. The sound played a big role too. See, Irreversible uses infrasound low frequency sound waves to augment its unsettling visuals. You can't actually hear the sound, but your body registers it anyway, leading to feelings of anxiety, unease, distress, and depression, in addition to the shivers and sometimes nausea. It's sort of anxiety producing. I don't know about fear, but it's unnerving. 
It's a trick that many modern horror films use, including huh. paranormal activity. Oh, and while infrasound doesn't affect every member of the audience in the same way, it's credited as one of the reasons why Irreversible makes many members of its audience feel sick. In fact, many people who watch don't even make it very far into the film. I've Thanks never, to the soundtrack, a mere half hour of Irreversible is why more not? than enough for many viewers, forcing them to after. turn the film off before its most horrific action even truly begins. When the woman made the Sundance what, no. debut, many people left the theater no and others simply wished they had. By all indications, that's exactly the type of reaction director Lucky McKee was hoping for. The yeah, plot, apparently, which centers on a dysfunctional want. family's attempt to civilize a wild woman by locking her in the basement and torturing her, is explicitly designed to push every misogynistic and toxically masculine button. Do we really get to keep her? We do. Oddly, it's also a thoughtful and nuanced film. At least once you get past its surface shocks, it's not all gore and gloom. The woman has something to say. It also has a pretty decent Rotten Tomatoes score, especially for this kind of thing. There's a rewarding experience lurking underneath the discomfort in chills. You just have to last through the whole movie to find. What the fuck is that movie? At the Toronto I heard this movie was great. Real. Yeah. Ready. After all, its late night midnight madness programming block has its name for a reason. Anything goes. Unfortunately, not everyone got the memo, and one film fan found Coralie Farge's revenge so intense that he had a seizure right in the middle of the theatre. Reportedly, it was a stomach churning scene in which a man is forced to remove a giant piece of glass from his foot that did it. Farge told IndieWire. We started to hear someone say, hello, hello, from the audience. I didn't know if it was someone making a joke in the room. Then I see the paramedics in the cinema. Uh -huh. Thankfully, the audience member was fine. He was in good company too. Revenge lead Matilda Lutz admitted the scene made her feel weird as well. And she was there when the scene was shot. If that scene doesn't get you, the rest of Revenge very well. Starring Lux as a woman out for vengeance after being left for dead by her lover and his friends, all of which is shown on screen, naturally. Revenge is a lean, brutal, and extremely well-reviewed thriller that's just as thrilling as it is oh! disturbing. Just don't take it lightly. Oh yeah, I heard this movie's like really crazy. This came out this year, I think, actually. Really? Yeah. Lars von Trier has been down this road. I was invited in to a screening of this and I did not watch it. <laughs> I wanted to see it though. I actually do want to see it. It deserves its own entry on this list. It's wildly misogynistic, unsettling, and is relentlessly bleak. Wildly misogynistic. I feel like this is a theme. I would never. I would never watch Antichrist. Never watch it. A decade later, Von Trier did it again. After doling out a multi year ban to Von Trier, after the director said he sympathized with Adolf Hitler, can authorities decided to let the filmmaker exhibit his latest picture at the 2018 festival? Well, surprise! The house that Jack built is even more difficult to stomach than its predecessor. In the movie, Matt Dillon plays a serial killer on a 12 year murder spree. When the house that Jack built screened, people left. Not just one or two either. Reportedly, more than 100 festival guests decided to leave the theatre rather than finish watching. In the aftermath, attendees turned to Twitter to express their disgust, calling Von Trier's movie vomitive and claimed that it, quote, should not have been made. Fair criticisms, but they should have expected it. The house that Jack built yeah, was so dumbass. gross that it wasn't even allowed to compete for the Pong d'Or, Cannes' top prize. Instead, it screened outside of competition in order to avoid any anti-Christ-like controversies. When horror fans entered the theatre to see by at the Fantasia Fest 2015, mm. they received special bite branded bath bags. It wasn't a joke. As Fantasia Fest co-director Mitch Davis posted on Facebook, during the screening, at least two people passed out. One hit his head on the stairs, another started puking. By the time the film wrapped, an ambulance was on site treating various members of the audience for illness. That's a pretty what strong the reaction, fuck is this but on movie? the other hand, Bite is a particularly gross movie. The horror begins in Costa Rica, where a bride-to-be receives a mysterious insect bite while celebrating her bachelorette party. I'm fine! It's just a small bug bite! Not that Casey has time to worry about it, of 
Of course, she's already struggling with her upcoming wedding, her domineering soon-to-be mother-in-law, and her fiancé's child-filled plans for their future. Like Bite's audience, however, Casey doesn't realize the severity of her situation. Before long, she's puking up pus, laying egg sacs around her apartment, raising a hive of carnivorous monsters and watching as her body decomposes, revealing the insectoid form underneath. Sounds kind of cool. <laughs> what the fuck is this? That seems I kind of want to see this one. A middling character drop into a full on body horror, and it doesn't really offer a break once it kicks into high gear. What? As Fantasia Fest proves, it's not an easy movie to finish. In fact, you might find it to be something of an endurance test if you do sit down to watch it. When a filmmaker says their movie is going to make you vomit, believe them. It's far, far better than the alternative. <laughs> Sam Peckinpah's grim and gritty There's a lot of these. The Wild Bunch might be considered a classic now, but during its initial run, the movie's hardcore violence was too much for late 60s movie Mel games. Mel Gibson's Three remaking this. This is lambasted the film, calling it wasted insanity. After launch, Cowboy King John Wayne complained that the Wild Bunch's blood-soaked action, quote, destroyed the myth of the Old West. Even by you know, the genocide standards, the Wild Bunch is still grotesquely violent. In the 90s, Warner Brothers tried to release a director's cut with 10 extra minutes of footage. None of that new stuff was particularly gory, but the MPAA still took the opportunity to change the Wild Bunch's rating from an R to an NC-17, really? leaving the film out of theaters for an extra two years. The Wild Bunch is brutal and uncompromising, and at the time, was too much for many theater attendees. I not Some know of that. whom walked yeah. out just 20 minutes into the film. Just because The Wild Bunch is a classic doesn't mean it's easy to watch. Even today, all of that bloody ultraviolence means that you might have to step away before the final credits roll. Don't be ashamed, you'd hardly be the first one. Ain't like it used to be, but uh, I kind of want to see this do. now. Wow. That was a lot of movies. Wow. That's dark. I, I, I want to see bite. Yeah, that was the most visually interesting. <laughs> like, I was like, what are those things? And they're egg sacs? I was just like, oh, this isn't another sexual assault movie. This is just someone got bit and then they started morphing it. And there was something about that whole plot that was like, this sounds like crazy. It's so like, <laughs> fundamentally relatable too. Oh my gosh, I hate bug bites. Oh God. Oh man, that sounds super, I don't know, like a good body horror. It sounds like the fly a little bit. Oh, oh man, yeah, that, sounds, good times. that sounds That sounds really you know crazy. Oh my gosh. You know, there are some really bad bug bites out there. Like my mom got one and then like she had knee pain for six months. Mm. Chikungunya. It's a real disease. That sounds funky. But it's not. It's, you don't turn into a bug. So Aww. she's good. Ching, ching, ching. She's still a person. Look, I hate Eli Ross movies. Not because I can't sit through them because they're so like, oh no, oh, what's, no happen what's happening? You know, this is why I think you're so flawed with your films. And I know he has a fan base out there. I don't think a lot of people will speak up for his <laughs> films. But have you seen any of Eli Ross movies? He's the one who uh, did uh, Hostel. Yeah. I saw like a 10 minute clip of Hostel and said, I'm never watching this. He's talking about, um, if you really, okay, if I've really done my job as a director, nobody can actually watch your movie. You don't want people walking out of a movie. You want them running out of the theater screaming. When that happens, that's like a standing, see, his movies aren't scary though. That's the issue that I have with them. It's like tonally, like the, all, the whole vibe just doesn't feel real. So he settles for like insane amounts of gore that's just off-putting. So if anyone leaves, it's because you're like, this movie's just sick. I don't want... Like, no one leaves in like a, oh my god! And everyone leaves I'm like... so scared! Like, this is, 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 this is awful. So what's yeah. the scariest movie to you? Your favorite, most horrifying horror movie? What's your favorite scary movie? The movie that scared me the most? Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, that all depends on age and stuff because I don't really get scared now, which is funny because when you're growing up, it's like you think you'll never stop being scared in movies. But nowadays, I watch the scariest movie of the year and I don't really get scared. I get scared. <laughs> what's it? Why? What's yours? 
Oh, God. I mean, I could... Because like, I know my favorite horror movie is not really that scary. So I'm just I really sensitive to horror. Like, a yeah. paranormal activity, that kind of a thing. Yeah, that like, scared the shit out of me when I saw it. Yeah, yeah that one yeah. was terrifying. Generally speaking, like, any of the Saw movies, I'll just get up and I, I end up walking around the room. I cannot sit down and I'm just like, oh, I can't handle it. I can't mm. handle it. I can't handle it. That's why I avoid it. It's just too much of an experience. I know what I you like mean. It. I mean, like, what he's talking about here, what scares us is very subjective. I know people who are like, I'm really scared of movies like Halloween because that's real, you know? And then for me, I'm like, well, weirdly, I get more scared of supernatural stuff, I think because of my, like, Catholic upbringing. So when I see Same. something like Paranormal Activity or The Shining or something, things that deal with, like, demons and ghosts... That scares me more than real life thing for some reason. It's like this is called goes in your mind and beliefs and all that stuff. Yeah. So subjectively speaking, I feel like the movie that probably terrified me the most, like growing up, it was Poltergeist that scared me the most. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I don't know what movie ultimately is the scariest one I've seen. The, the thing is, I think, is that it's not about like the gore, as you're saying with the Eli Roth yeah. movies. It's about how the story's told. Yeah, it's about the tone, the vibe. It is about the mood, especially. Like Lars von Trier, who did like this movie called Antichrist and the House that Jack Built. I have a hard time sitting through his movies. They are genuinely very disturbing to me. I think Eli Roth can go even gorier than him. This is the one with like the talking fox. Chaos reigns. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like his tone is so disturbing, just the tone, <laughs> that before there's even any gore, I'm uncomfortable. I started his movie Antichrist, and I heard about a couple of moments of like genital mutilation in the film. Ooh, like, like male or female? Both. Okay. So, you, oh, that's cool that it's equal. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Fair, I respect that. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I just wanted to know if I want to watch this movie or not. This <laughs> 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 reaction. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> I heard about those scenes. I heard very vivid descriptions of what goes on. And I was like, nah, I might be able to sit through it. And then I started the movie. I got 10 minutes into the movie. And the tone was, just the tone was so unsettling. I'm like, Nope, I'm not going to do this. I turned it off. I just won't sit through that. Because <laughs> something like Eli Roth, I can, uh, that's just some stupid movie. But something like that, that feels real, ugh, I'll get under my skin. This movie, Irreversible. This, oh, yeah. The one so about the, the sound ranges. Basically, there's a 14-minute assault scene. And it's like, I don't know if it's one shot or like, something. Like, what do you mean like, by assault? You know what I mean. Okay. The word that would get us. The R word? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Which is probably already like demonetized, but yeah. A in general, I just have the hardest time watching those specific scenes. And then I heard there's like a 14 minute scene in here. That's what it's like. It's most famous scene. It's 14 minutes long, so it's so. And I'm like, no wonder the main actors can't watch it. But yeah, it's traumatizing just to film that scene. Exactly. And then you have to relive. I I, I, mean, I don't know who would want to like, watch this movie. I don't though. know who would want to act in this movie no, too, yeah. because when you, I've taken a lot of acting classes and like. You have to, especially for these kind of movies, you have to really mentally go there. You, you really know? do. And there's like two main, at least that I've learned, there are so many different methods. But like one of them is substitution. So you have to like put your own mm -hmm. memories in there in such a way that you elicit the real yeah. similar reaction to what the character is feeling. So yeah, I wouldn't want to relive a past thing that was horrible, first yeah. of all. Or there's like you use your imagination, your imagination. to elicit that. And yeah, I don't want to do that either. No. Mm, I'm good. I don't know. I wouldn't want to even direct, like, I would never put that in a, I don't know. One of the tropes I hate in movies nowadays is, and what's funny is this movie Revenge, she gets raped and then she uh, goes in this like crazy ass uh, revenge spree. Mm -hmm. And I kind of hate that trope now because it's such a trope of like, if she's going to be a strong badass, she has to get assaulted first, you know? And I hate that trope. But everyone, even women I know who are very outspoken against that trope, really like this movie so okay. it's interesting to see a movie like this that apparently handles it well i haven't seen it yet but i know a, a pretty Very good curious. amount of people yeah and I, I heard it's like really intense and gory that one sounded appealing to me uh what about the wild bunch is the last one here yeah i feel like, like they should have led with like, that this maybe. seems like the most tame one just because of the like are you trying to be like all fucking like film schooly about it well actually it's the wild bunch is the time period and the consideration of that like what I mean, it's a classic and people sit through this movie all the time you know i don't think that should be last I mean, there's of course worse films i don't know have you, are there any films you just refuse to sit through i won't sit through this one called the serbian film 
which involves like the most horrendous things I've ever heard of put on camera. Oh, there's a really, really bad one. Um, the Hannah Montana documentary. <laughs> Oh yeah, <laughs> will not. <put> that. <laughs> and he did anything with Sounds those Disney Channel cool. kids. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. Um, <laughs> Jonas Brothers 3D shit. Oh, God no. <laughs> I watched the Hannah Montana movie in the theaters. I think I liked the girl at the time. I don't remember who I went with. Oh, <laughs> oh, girl. Oh, my God. Or maybe I was by myself. I don't oh, know. God. <laughs> I wish you had a time machine to go see that. Really? Like the movie Click or yeah. like just watch and like he was by himself. But I'm like, oh yeah, I saw that. <laughs> really answer movies I won't sit through. Um, Hostel actually is, is one yeah. of them that comes to mind. It's just too much gore. I've watched all of the Saw movies though somehow. But it's because my ex made me sit through them. That he bastard. But Taped your eyes open. <laughs> Handcuffed you to a chair. <laughs> You know, the thing with those is that um, I felt like there were some good themes at the end of the day in that. There was some analogies in there. Yeah, that I felt and there's like, mis there's like mystery elements that you're like, oh, I kind of want to run the twist, you know? Like, there's yeah, a, there's I mean, you just look away. Like when the, when the gore stuff's when the, happening, yeah. When the arms are coming yeah. off and the legs are... Uh, it's not all the time. I refuse to watch The Human Centipede Part 2. Ooh, part 2, but you watched Part 1. Actually, I, I started the first half hour of Part 1, and then I was like, Nah, I'm going to do this. I want to stop this before it gets there. It's like, this is just so gross to me. Like, the idea of what it, where it's headed just was like, nope, I won't do it. And then I heard about all the craziness that goes on in part two. There's just something I just, I refuse to put myself through. I just, I refuse, because I'm the kind of guy that if I'm witness to something in a movie like that, I'm going to replay it in my head oh, so often. And I just don't want to deal with that. It I, does, I don't it gets like that. burned into your head. I don't need yeah. that. Yeah. I'm it's not like bad vibes. I'm not good at like no. I'm just not gonna think about it. You know, I'm not good at being that way. Yeah. So that that's why I don't uh, sit through it for myself. I feel like I'm gonna see Revenge one day, and I feel like I might want to see Bite, the Wild Bunch. I want to see, especially since Mel Gibson's remaking this, so it's probably gonna be ten times more gory. It's like movie Woman. That sounded really interesting. That sounded weird. That sounded super weird. Really like offensive. <laughs> yeah. Honestly, though, the thing with me in movies is like I don't have time to go watching all these Arts things that are horror. things that are low. <laughs> on the list yeah. it's like either it's amazing i'll watch it or it, it's not worth it i don't feel like it I, yeah i've got shit to do so well hey listen on that note i want to give a patron of the day shout out to someone special <laughs> let's do it <laughs> let's do it. i want to do a guy named taylor bentley oh that's a good name taylor bentley listen so i i chat with some people at our patreon to messages and stuff and there was a while where he went away because he got a new girl. Okay. He, like, she was really into him. Mm -hmm. And then he stopped messaging us back, but he stayed pledged. Good on you. That's a good guy right there. And I shouted him out, and uh, he showed his girlfriend our shout out, and she loved it. Yay. So, so we're I, helping him get, get some Yeah. Oh, kisses, yeah. Some he's kisses. Yeah. He's waiting till uh, uh, his deathbed. <laughs> yeah. Okay. He's waiting a long time. Oh, you know what? Good for he's them. He's that holy about it. I just wanted to say, man, you better hold on to her tight because what tends to happen if a, like a subscriber's girlfriend ends up liking me, they realize that they'll never have someone as cool, as funny, as good looking as me. So they end up leaving said subscriber. So if I were you, I would not let her watch any more of our videos because she's bound to leave. I heard some horror stories about women who saw the notebook and said, my man will never be like Ryan Gosling, so I'm leaving him. Take that, apply it to me, and that's the situation you're in. So, huh, you're in. <laughs> so I would just be very mindful of that before you start going showing her shout outs. And if you want to start up your own channel, um, don't because I will not support you. <laughs> I was kidding, man. Show her all the videos, touch each other to our videos. And uh, the video editing software, you know, just start with iMovie for beginners. It's actually a great program, Final Cut Pro and iMovie. I use iMovie, so, it's great. Yeah, it's great, especially with what you can do with it now. So there you go, man. And um, you still haven't replied to me since November 17th, so quit being a dick. Get on it. Get off of her and get on the messages. But he's holy, he's not on her. In his mind, he is. Okay. Masturbation. <laughs> <laughs> what is this word? I don't know what that is. <laughs> oh, Kat. You'd be so much happier. <laughs> anyway, guys. 
You can subscribe to the Reject Nation. What's the most disturbing movie you can think of? Tell Click us. that notification bell. Yeah. Follow Cat on yeah. in the world. Uh, if you see her on the road, stalk her. Oh, don't do that. But you can go to my website, catalvarado.com slash events, and you can see when my next shows are. It is tough to be a woman these days, and I like the way you said that. Thank you. We have a Patreon, too.